is going on guys? This is Lior and welcome back to my channel. Now in this video, I am super excited to give you guys an overview of what it's like to live in probably one of Boston's coolest, newest, and just very different neighborhood, the seaport. I'm also gonna include Fort Point in this video. Now, if you know anything about Boston history, you know that the seaport area was not always like this, far from it. It actually you just used to be kind of a barren land with a bunch of parking garages, which people would just use to park and hop over to downtown. But today it is insanely radically different. As you can see behind me, we are filled with just absolute ton of new construction, glass structures, glass towers everywhere. It is absolutely booming in the seaport. So it has completely, completely changed. It started with the Envoy Hotel, which opened a number of years ago. And since then, the whole area has just been on an insane, insane boom. There is new construction for everything. We've got new office space coming in here. We've got projects for new lab space, new commercial space. Of course, we've got residential, both apartments and condos in sleek glass towers. So when you step into the seaport, it's got just a completely different energy. Again, we've got glass towers everywhere. We do have some of the old quaint Boston in the Four Point neighborhood, but this part of the seaport proper is definitely different different type of crowd. You got a huge amounts of restaurants, uh, breweries, green space. So it is very, very different. So I'm gonna give you guys the overview of exactly what it's gonna feel like if you decide to live in the seaport. And if you've seen my other videos, you know we're gonna start first with food and drink. That always is the key to my heart. So let's go down and start checking out exactly what it's like to live in this neighborhood. So before we start talking all about the different places, the food, the restaurants here, two super quick things, guys. You already know, number one, if this is your first time on my channel, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Put out tons of new videos every single week like this. And number two, guys, if you're thinking about making any sort of move into Boston, whether you're buying, selling, investing, leasing, whatever it is, I still get so many calls from you guys watching my videos and I absolutely love it. So hit me up and I will definitely, definitely help you out. So let's get talking about probably one of my favorite things in the world, food, especially in the seaport. I am standing right outside committee right now, which is a fantastic little Greek spot. And that's kind of got Greek small plates as well as craft cocktails. What's cool about the seaport is you've just got so many different options. So I just talked about committee right across the street from me is Empire, which is kind of a very hip Asian restaurant. Also turns into a pretty cool a little night spot as well. If you're trying to go out to you've got spots like Del Frisco's, you've got Davio's, you've got Strega. So if you're looking for steakhouses, they're here as well. A number of other restaurants, all very awesome spots. Gather is right behind us over there. Great little spot. It's come here on the weekends a lot for like a little brunch, some food, some craft cocktails. You've got also a number of really solid Mexican spots. You've got Pink Taco. You've also got Bar Taco. I will say I've spent a number of Sundays there with tacos and a number of margaritas. Always a fantastic time. On the other side of Northern Ave, you have a couple of other spots as well. Um, some of my favorites, 75 on Liberty Wharf. Awesome little cute spot, nice dishes, really good drinks with views right on the water. You've got a Tony C's right there, which is like a big sports bar. So really good for game days. You've got a couple of Mexicans places over there. Of course, you've got the legal harbor side, which a lot of people know about. So as you can see, a ton of amazing restaurants. You do have a number of chains here as well, including Shake Shack, which is also right across the street from us. You've got a sweet green, you've got a Tate. So all around just incredible, incredible options for food and anyone else that's a big foodie like myself. On top of all the food options we just talked about, there are a number of very, very good places to go get drinks here. Everyone needs that once in a while. So we've got two breweries here. We got Cisco Brewery, which is almost like right in the middle of everything. It's this huge open space. You guys probably seeing video of it where it's empty, but believe me on the weekends, it is absolutely slammed to the T and it's just an awesome little spot. You've got tons of little stands. You've got live music sometimes. And it's just like right in the middle of all the glass towers. Really great spot. We've also got Trillium Brewing here as well. Probably one of my favorite IPAs is from Trillium. You guys know I'm a big IPA guy from other videos. Also a great spot. They got some fantastic food on their menu as well. 
couple of other spots I'll mention. You've got, of course, the lookout bar at Envoy Hotel, which is a staple in the seaport, and other places as well, like Lucky's Lounge and a few other bars throughout the neighborhood. So outside of bars and restaurants, there's still a ton of other things to do in the seaport. If you're a gym rat, kind of like I've become a little bit, you've got a couple of spots. You've got options like the Equinox. You've got Soul Cycle here. You've got places like King's Dining Entertainment, which has a bunch of other nightlife activities. You can go to places like Laugh Boston, which is a comedy club here. I've actually got my tickets for a show. I'm very excited in September. And you have options of checking out different artist gallery here. Fort Point, the historic neighborhood right next to the Seaport, is actually a very big arts community. So you can check out places like the Fort Point Arts Art Gallery. They've got other art galleries as well for other specific artists. Now, plenty of other things to do even on top of that. Um, other attractions you, want, you might want to check out if you're going to come to the Seaport is, of course, the ICA, the Contemporary Art Museum. They've got some amazing, amazing exhibitions over there. You can, of course, also take walks like we are on the Boston Harbor Walk or the Fan Pier Walk. I mean, it is just, especially in the summer, you can't really get better than this, right? I mean, you've got the ocean right in front of you. It's beautiful just walking, enjoying the weather. You've got some restaurants that are water facing, which is, of course, amazing. You do also have a, a number of green space options. Right between the Seaport and South Boston, you'll find the Lawn on D, which is kind of a little awesome large space, home to a number of gatherings. They have some music, you can get drinks. It's really, really nice. In the Seaport itself, you've got the Seaport Common. Again, if you walk by there during the day, you'll see gatherings. Uh, sometimes you'll see fitness classes. And again, it's just right at the heart of Seaport uh, where you can step out, take a walk, especially when the weather is as beautiful as it is like today in the summer in Boston. And finally, you've got plenty of plenty of shopping options. If that, all of that wasn't enough, you've got a number of high-end retailers here that you can find. You can shop at places like Lululemon. You've got a Sephora. You've got a Mr. Sid, a blank label. So if all of these options weren't good enough, you still can go do your shopping here and find exactly what you're looking for. All right, and now let's talk a little bit about convenience and transportation if you're living in the seaport. So for those of you guys that are working downtown or in the financial district, the seaport's amazing, obviously right across the Four Point Channel, so it's a very easy commute. Unfortunately, the seaport does not have any tea stops directly in it, but you can go right on Summer Street, cross the channel, and you can get to the South Station tea stop, or it's a little bit further away, you can also try to get to the West Broadway tea stop in South Boston. But the good thing about the Seaport is it does have very, very convenient highway access. So if you're gonna be driving, that's certainly not gonna be a problem. And finally, let's talk a little bit about grocery shopping. So within the Seaport, you do have a Trader Joe's port. So that Trader Joe's does get very busy as a heads up. So if you're gonna go there, make sure you allot some time. Uh, you do have another smaller kind of a little convenience grocery store, Cardulos. But if you want something more, you can also hop right over to South Boston where you can go to the Stop and Shop there or the Foodies Market right on West Broadway. And for our final piece of the video, of course, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the real estate and the development pipeline in both Seaport and Fort Point. So right now we actually migrated over to Fort Point. It's actually a very different neighborhood than the Seaport, right? Instead of large glass towers, this is a lot more quintessential Boston where you have a large brick building. You have red brick, yellow brick, very, very quintessential Boston, right? Now, a lot of the housing in Fort Point is very different. Um, most, a lot of these condos and apartments were old commercial warehouses that have since been converted to residential and commercial usage. So for contrast, if we talk about the Seaport, right? You've got condo buildings there like 50 Liberty and 22 Liberty. On 55 Liberty, for example, it's a 14 story, 120 unit condo building. Over there, it's glass tower. So you've got floor to ceiling windows, absolutely you know, beautiful luxury condos. The pricing there is certainly different than Four Point, right? In those buildings, your typical units sell anywhere from $2,000 to $2,500 per square foot and even higher. There's been units that have sold over $3,000 per square foot. So that part, those condos right there that are right on the water, that is literally some of the most expensive real estate in all of Boston. I mean, you're talking about 2,500 up to 3,000 a square foot. That's pretty close to New York City pricing at that point. But when we get over to the Fort Point neighborhood, again, that's where we're at right now, pricing is a little bit different here. So again, instead of the glass towers, as you can see, for example, the Muse condo building right here on 51 Melcher Street, 
So the pricing here is a little, a lot more reasonable, right? You're typically here somewhere between a thousand to twelve hundred dollars per square foot, right? So that means for your average, let's say, thousand square foot condo, you're typically looking about a million, one point one million, give or take. Instead of almost three times the pricing, literally a couple of blocks over, where you're in the glass towers of the luxury condos of the proper seaport. So. Very, very sort of different pricing structure, even though the two neighborhoods are right next to each other. And by the way, these condos are absolutely beautiful. A lot of these, since they were, since they were previously commercial warehouses, these are essentially loft style and they've got very, very high ceilings. A lot of them are kind of brick and beam feel. Um, so it's very lofty and personally my favorite kind of condo. I hope, hopefully I'm gonna be buying one of those pretty soon, but it's just got a very, very cool industrial and chic Boston feel to it. So hopefully that makes sense about the real estate pricing. Now, one final note in terms of future development and opportunity in the seaport, it is far, far from over. There is a ton of development going on in the seaport right now. For example, the Omni Hotel is under construction. You have the St. Regis condos that are right on the waterfront. That's actually their first project that's not gonna have any hotel component to it. But there is a lot, a lot of development in the pipeline, a lot more residential, commercial, office, lab space. So if you guys think the seaport's tapped out of these prices, I would probably think twice about that. I mean, this area is gonna continue to be developed at a very, very rapid pace. It's probably gonna continue to change over the next three to five years. So you'll see more and more new construction, and I think you'll continue to see the neighborhood continue to change. So keep your eye out on this neighborhood. And with that guys, hopefully all of that made sense. Hopefully this gave you an awesome overview of what it's like to live in the seaport slash the four point neighborhoods. Really incredible neighborhoods. I'm here a lot on the weekends, especially in the summers. I live literally the neighborhood over in South Boston, so I'm always here. It is one of my favorite places to hang out, get food, to hang out with friends. It's just an amazing, amazing area. So if you guys have any questions, make sure you smash them below and I will definitely, definitely help you out.